It's time once again to explore planet Earth and go on an extraordinary adventure to ancient landscapes where colossal creatures once roamed. In this riveting exploration of prehistoric mammals, we'll unveil the mysteries of towering giants and predators alike. See the huge mammals that disappeared from the face of the Earth forever as we go on a trip back in time where every fossilized bone tells a story and every discovery unveils a chapter in the epic saga of life on our planet. From giant apes to an animal that was once thought to be bigger than a blue whale. Get ready to witness the wonders of a lost world as we unveil the biggest prehistoric mammals to ever exist on Earth. Gigantopithecus blackie, or G. blackie for short, was the largest primate to ever inhabit Earth. The species flourished around 2 million years ago in China, Southeast Asia and parts of India in dense canopy forests filled with a variety of fruit, seeds, grasses and bamboo. No full skeleton of G. blackie has ever been found, only jaw bones and teeth have been discovered. Once examined, the upper molars were found to be 57.8% larger compared to a modern-day gorilla's upper molars, and the lower molars 33% larger. Those estimates, compared to a modern gorilla, puts G. Blackie's body weight at around 440 to 660 pounds or more. And the creature stood at a height of about 9 to 10 feet tall when standing fully upright. But due to its tremendous size and weight, G. Blackie would have been quadrupedal, and it was most likely a knuckle walker. Some researchers believe Gigantopithecus mostly ate bamboo and supplemented its diet with shrubs, roots, seeds and fruit. But the once dense and humid closed canopy forests where it lived started to disappear, replaced by the mixed woodland grassland ecosystem of the savannah. This means bamboo would have died out too, with bamboo gone. Signs of pits and scratches found in the teeth suggest G. Blackie had nothing left to eat except bark and twigs from the forest floor, and the species died out forever, around 295 to 215,000 years ago. When it comes to massive prehistoric mammals, one creature stands as a colossal testament to the wonders of the ancient Americas, Megatherium. Often referred to as a giant sloth, Megatherium roamed the landscapes of South and Central America during the Pleistocene Epoch, some 2.5 million to 11,000 years ago. Picture a creature towering over modern grizzly bears, reaching heights of up to 20 feet tall when standing on its hind legs. Perhaps the most iconic feature is the Megatherium's enormous curved claws that were well suited for various tasks. These claws, which could grow up to a foot in length, were likely used for grabbing vegetation, stripping leaves from branches, and possibly used for defense against predators. These giant sloths were thought to be primarily herbivores, but some thought that they were omnivores as well, and they could crush smaller animals easily. Some archaeologists also believe that it used its claws for digging huge tunnels underground, and since 2009, more than 1,500 tunnels have been found with giant claw marks, some tunnels hundreds of feet long. Yet no one knows why the Megatherium dug these tunnels. So what happened to the Megatherium americanum? Evidence points to climate change and hunting by modern humans during a time called the late Quaternary Megafauna Extinction Event. Of course, it wasn't the only huge mammal roaming around during the Pleistocene Epoch and in the same location. Imagine an armadillo the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and weighing up to two tons, and you have the Glyptodon. Glyptodon was an armored giant of the Pleistocene era. Resembling a massive prehistoric armadillo, Glyptodon had a heavy armored carapace or shell that encased its body, providing good protection against predators. This carapace was made of bone segments called osteoderms or scutes, much like the shell of a modern-day tortoise. In 2020, four glyptodon shells were uncovered by a farmer in Argentina. Looking at them gives you an idea of just how big they were, ranging in size from small car-sized specimens to behemoths exceeding 10 feet in length. 
Glyptodon roamed the grasslands and woodlands of the Americas, using its powerful limbs and sturdy claws to forage for vegetation and defend itself against predators. Despite its impressive defenses, Glyptodon eventually succumbed to the pressures of a changing world, the same way Megatherium went out, with the last of its kind vanishing from Earth roughly 10,000 years ago. It's very likely that they were not only hunted by early humans for their shells to be used as shelter, but they also had to watch out for other predators as well. Which brings us to our next huge prehistoric mammal. We're talking about Arctotherium, the giant short-faced bear of the Pleistocene epoch, whose name literally means bear beast. Arctotherium was a formidable apex predator during its time and ranks among the largest bears known to have ever existed with some estimates suggesting it could weigh up to 3,500 pounds and stand over 11 feet tall when standing on its hind legs. Its immense size distinguishes it as a true giant of the prehistoric world. Sporting a robust build and powerful limbs, this carnivorous colossus roamed the grasslands and forests of South America and was armed with sharp claws and powerful jaws. As a formidable carnivore, Arctotherium likely occupied the top of the food chain in its habitat, preying upon a variety of large mammals including Glyptodon and possibly Megatherium too. Its powerful jaws and sharp teeth, along with its robust build, suggest it was well adapted for hunting and consuming substantial prey. These massive bears went extinct right along with the extinction of the giant mammals they preyed upon. But there was another huge mammal that lived during the Pleistocene Epoch. The Steppe Mammoth is an extinct species of mammoth that inhabited Eurasia. It was one of the largest species of mammoths, characterized by its immense size and distinctive features. The Steppe Mammoth stood approximately 13 feet tall at the shoulder, and fossil evidence shows it could weigh up to 12 tons, much larger than modern-day elephants. It had long, curved tusks that could reach lengths of over 13 feet long, and were likely used for tasks such as digging in search of food and defending against predators. The steppe mammoth was well adapted to cold, open grassland environments where it grazed on a diet primarily composed of grasses, sedges, and other low-lying vegetation. Fossil remains of the steppe mammoth have been discovered across a wide geographic range, spanning from Western Europe to Siberia and China. These fossils provide valuable insights into the evolutionary history and paleobiology of this magnificent creature. Scientists believe that the steppe mammoth played a significant role in shaping the ecosystems of the Pleistocene, influencing vegetation dynamics and serving as a keystone herbivore in its environment. Despite its impressive size and ecological importance, the steppe mammoth eventually faced extinction during the late Pleistocene, likely due to a combination of factors such as climate change, habitat loss, and human hunting pressures. Studying the steppe mammoth contributes to our understanding of prehistoric biodiversity and the complex interplay between ancient megafauna and their changing environments. There's no doubt that the prehistoric mammals were huge, but you're about to see some that were even bigger. Indracotherium, often referred to as the Siberian Unicorn, is one of the largest terrestrial mammals to have ever walked the Earth. It existed approximately 34 to 23 million years ago in Central Asia, particularly in regions now part of Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China, where fossils of this giant have been found. What researchers discovered from the fossils is that it stood an astounding 16 to 18 feet high at the shoulder and had to weigh somewhere between 15 and 20 tons. That's about the same weight as three fully grown African elephants. Although Idricotherium slightly resembles a modern-day rhinoceros without the horn on its nose, it's not directly related in the sense that it shared a common ancestor. Its massive size was likely an adaptation to browsing on the high branches of trees in its forested habitat. Indracotherium possessed a long, flexible neck, ideal for reaching vegetation high above the ground, and its robust skull supported powerful chewing muscles to grind down tough plant material. No one's entirely sure why these creatures went extinct, but shifts in vegetation patterns and competition with other herbivore mammals may have contributed to its extinction. 
But there were many huge carnivores as well that also hunted large plant-eating mammals. Andrusarchus was a colossal carnivore that lived during the Eocene Epoch. Andrusarchus, an extinct mammal from the Eocene Epoch, is known primarily from a single skull discovered in Mongolia. It's believed to have lived around 45 to 36 million years ago and is considered one of the largest carnivorous mammals known to science. Its massive skull, measuring over 83 centimeters in length, suggests it was a formidable predator and hints at a powerful bite force capable of dispatching formidable prey with ease. Yet, despite its impressive size and predatory prowess, much about Andrusarchus remained shrouded in uncertainty. We know that mammals started out as very tiny creatures, but even some rodents grew to unusual sizes. Joseph Ortegesia monisi, an extinct rodent species from the late Miocene of Uruguay, holds the title of the largest rodent ever known. Estimated to have lived around 2 to 4 million years ago, Joseph Ortegesia possessed a skull measuring over 20 inches in length, suggesting an overall body size comparable to that of a bull. Just imagine a rat of this size. That's one huge rodent. It had remarkable size and powerful incisors, measuring up to 12 inches in length. However, the exact function of its formidable teeth remained speculative. The elongated incisors may have been used for various purposes, including accessing vegetation, digging burrows, or defending against predators. Without direct evidence from behavior or fossilized traces of its activities, scientists rely on anatomical features and comparisons with related species to infer the potential functions of Joseph Ortegesia's incisors. The exact reasons for its extinction remain uncertain and are subject to ongoing scientific investigation. Various factors including environmental changes, shifts in vegetation patterns, Competition with other species and possibly human activities may have contributed to its demise. Titanotipolis, an extinct genus of camelid, lived during the late Miocene epoch around 10 to 15 million years ago. It was one of the largest known members of the camel family, standing at approximately 10 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing over 2,200 pounds. Titanotilopus had a robust build and long legs adapted for traversing the diverse landscapes of its time, including grasslands, savannas, and forests. Fossil discoveries of Titanotipolis have been primarily made in North America, particularly in regions such as Texas, Nebraska, and California. Titanotipolis likely possessed a browsing diet, feeding on a variety of vegetation such as leaves, shrubs, and grasses. It also died out because of various environmental and ecological factors. While Titanotipolis was likely a large and powerful animal, it may have still been vulnerable to predation by large carnivores of the time, such as our next creature. So what do you get when you cross a bear and a dog? You get Amphisian, whose name actually means bear dog. It was a formidable carnivorous mammal that lived during the Miocene and early Pliocene epochs, roughly 16 to 2 million years ago. It ranged in size from that of a large dog to that of a modern bear, with some species reaching lengths of up to almost 7 feet long and standing at shoulder heights of over 3 feet. Possessing a unique blend of bear-like and dog-like characteristics, Amphisian had sharp teeth and powerful jaws, making it well-suited for hunting large vertebrates such as early horses, rhinoceroses, and juvenile elephants. Despite its prowess as a predator, Amphisian eventually went extinct during the late Neogene period, likely due to climate change, habitat loss, competition, and potentially human impact. Going back to the Pleistocene, there were other huge mammals that we found fossils of. Diprotodon, often referred to as the giant wombat, was an extraordinary herbivorous marsupial that inhabited Australia during the Pleistocene epoch, around 1.6 million to 46,000 years ago. It stood as one of the largest known marsupials, reaching heights of up to 6.6 .6 feet at the shoulder and weighing over 4,400 pounds. Its imposing size rivaled that of a modern-day rhinoceros. Diprotodon's most remarkable features included its massive skull, powerful limbs, and distinctive arrangement of teeth suited for consuming tough vegetation. 
Despite its formidable appearance, Diprotodon was likely a gentle giant, browsing on a variety of plants in its ancient Australian habitat. Tragically, Diprotodon, along with many other megafaunal species, faced extinction during the late Pleistocene, possibly due to a combination of climate change, human hunting, and habitat loss. Now we've come to what appeared to be, at least for a little while, the largest mammal that ever lived on Earth. Perisetus colossus, an extinct species of sperm whale, once roamed the oceans during the Miocene epoch, approximately 12 to 13 million years ago. It earned its name from its massive size, reaching lengths of up to 65 feet and likely weighed over 88 short tons, rivaling modern sperm whales. Fossils of Perisetus colossus have been primarily found in Peru. This ancient whale possessed strong conical teeth adapted for grasping and tearing apart prey, suggesting it preyed on large marine animals like fish, squid, and possibly other smaller cetaceans. Despite its colossal size and predatory prowess, Perisetus colossus eventually disappeared from the oceans, with the exact reasons for its extinction remaining unclear. As time goes by, we may find more evidence of prehistoric giants from Earth's past. Let us know in the comments what you thought about these impressive giants, and make sure to stay tuned here for more. Thanks for watching.